What's this? Yeah, this is dermatofiber sarcoma protuberans. And I could talk about this forever, but I don't have time to. And I have other videos on it, so I'll link to those. I would like to point out two things, though. We often teach that hyperplasia of the epidermis and collagen trapping are great clues for dermatofibroma. And that's true. But you can sometimes see them in DFSP. There's a little bit of tabling here, but this is still DFSP. There's collagen trapping over here, but it's still DFSP. So just be aware of that. The main thing here is that you have bland, very bland, thin, stretched out spindle cells. Look how thin and skinny those spindle cells are. They're not the chubby cells of a dermatofibroma. Now, DF sometimes can have cells that look very much like this. And those are the cases that if I only have a partial biopsy, I'll do a CD34 stain to help me sort it out. Or even if a really difficult situation, I might do molecular. Because, but when you have the nice plump cells like we saw in the dermatofibromas earlier, then that's almost certainly not going to be DFSP because DFSP almost always have these very thin, very monotonous cells that make this swirling, whirling story form pattern. All the cells look the same because this is a translocation sarcoma, collagen 1A1, PDGF beta, and there's a, a, a subset that we recognize now that are negative for that, but have an alternative fusion, PDGF D, delta, okay? And then the fat is entrapped and look, the spindle cells are cleanly capturing these little islands of fat and squeezing the life out of them. And there's very little fat necrosis or inflammation, unlike when dermatofibroma trickles in, okay? Sometimes the whole subcutis gets wiped out and all you get is a big sheet of these spindle cells with just a few little islands or a little like chain of pearls of fat trapped way up in the middle of it. Dilated staghorn vessel is a common finding in dermatofibromas. I'm sorry, dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans. And despite the name, DFSP is completely unrelated to dermatofibroma. Usually on H and E, with practice, you can easily tell these two lesions apart if you have a big enough biopsy. But there are some times where I do need to stain them. But usually, as long as you can see the edges and the deep part of the lesion, you can you can figure out, oh, this is DFSP, not dermatofibroma. Look at the islands of fat there. See. This all used to be subcutis here. All of this was subcutis, and now it's been totally replaced by tumor with just little islands of fat remaining, DFSP. Rarely metastasizes, although when it gets higher grade, it can sometimes in like 15% of patients when it becomes fibrosarcomatous, but it is uh, infiltrative and has a high tendency for recurrence and requires either wide local excision or Mohs. And um, it can be quite morbid, even though the mortality is very low for this, it is a high morbidity. I know a lot of these patients because I volunteer in a DFSP patient support group on Facebook, and I've I'll given a, a TED talk about that. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in learning more.